Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back into the studio. This week's video is going to be a little bit different. It'll be a bit of a channel update, what to look forward to in the future and what I have in store for my Patreon supporters. The video is going to be footage of my finished half life size figure, so you'll get to see what we ended up with in detail. If you're interested in other things like video tutorials and not too interested in the channel update part of this video, you can skip forward to the 5 minute and 20 second mark. I have some video tutorial stuff in the latter half of this video for you, specifically. And with that out of the way, let's get to it. So we made this half life size figure during our Patreon exclusive video series. First of all, thank you to all of my patrons who made it possible to do this. The figure itself is based off of seven photographs, four for the body and then three for the portrait. I really wanted to show you that you don't need much in order to begin doing this sort of work. A big hurdle for people wanting to do something strange, something a little alien to most like making art, seems to be how to start out and get the ball rolling. Even before you commit yourself to schooling, I would strongly suggest trying whatever it is that you are wanting to go to school for first. If you want to make movies, make movies. Want to be a sculptor? Sculpt. I understand that it can be very hard to start and that's what I wanted to show you with this sculpture. It's not that hard. You need seven photos, some metal wire and some clay and you can go to town and create a full figure sculpture. This sculpture was made over the course of more than a year but it's really only made during 14 13 or 14 3 hour session days. That's around 42 hours of work. Water based clay, which is the clay that I used, can survive for a long time if you wrap it up carefully and spray it, say every half an hour or so while you're working on it. Notice how I unwrap this sculpture and do the same thing but in reverse and your sculpture will survive for a really long time. Space to work is for most of us an issue in the beginning and my suggestion here is to have a space big enough so that you can step back from your work three times the height of your work. This piece is around 75 centimeters tall so I needed to be able to step back 225 centimeters in order to observe it with no perspective distortion. A smaller piece, perhaps a third scale instead of a half scale would require an even shorter distance, so you don't really need a huge space in order to make sculpture. As I mentioned, I used water-based clay, which can be messy and you shouldn't work with it unless you have a dedicated space to do so because of the mess. If you're working out of your bedroom, for example, like I was in the beginning, try working with oil-based clay instead. It's gonna work pretty much the same way, but with less mess, less dust, and you don't need to spray it or wrap it up either, it'll just last forever. Finally, on to what will happen with this sculpture now. I will make a mold of it and then we will cast a copy of it in Hydra Resin, which is a non-toxic acrylic based resin that's very user friendly. The videos on mold making and casting is going up on the regular YouTube channel for free. For the Patreon supporters, we are going to start a series on portraiture. In the same fashion as the half life size videos, we will go really in depth in portraiture. We will start with the basic techniques of portraiture, which I will teach while sculpting a skull. Once we get that going next month, I will also see if I can find a place where you can order your own plaster skull to work from. I have some ideas for how to make this work. Once we finish the skull, we'll move on to sculpting a portrait from life, if I can find a suitable model. It should be easier for you to find someone willing to sit for a portrait, so I think working from life here is going to be the way to go. I'm very excited for this series and I think you'll find it both enjoyable and educational. I hope to have the first video in the portrait series out in the beginning of next month.
Now for some excerpts from the Patreon exclusive videos on sculpting a half-life size portrait, episode 12 and 13. I found that drawing a straight center line can be somewhat challenging depending on how much coffee you've had in the morning, how bumpy the clay surface is, how steady your hand is, etc. So in order to help myself out in drawing a very straight center line, I like to use a kitchen knife. It's a lot heavier than the wooden drawing tool that I use, which helps it from bouncing around and being pushed around too much when I draw. A straight center line running down the middle of the portrait is really key, as I use it to judge the symmetry of the bones of the face. If the center line is not straight, the bones will sit at a 90 degree angle to a bent center line, leading to a skull that looks soft and bent like a banana, like a skull that's been hit in the side with a baseball bat. With a straight center line, we can line up the bony landmarks that appear on the surface of the head, like the cheekbones, the jaw, the corner of the eyebrow, we can line these up 90 degrees to our center line and with the same distance heading out from our center line. And in this way, we'll get a skull that feels really solid and a sculpture which feels like it has internal structures. Small, easy to do steps that involve little risk is always good to take. One example of such a step is drawing on the hairline. This can be drawn on with a drawing tool and then be represented in clay. It will add a lot of our subject's character to our sculpture, while involving pretty much zero risk. Anything that happens far away from the front of the face, far away from the center line, involves fairly little risk, as the amount of clay needed here in order to reach overall dimension, overall width, is very great. Closer to our profile and our center line, things get more risky. An issue I see many students running into is overbuilding narrow areas because everything on their sculpture builds out together at the same rate with the same sized pieces of clay. The size of the piece of clay should correspond with the decision being made and where it's being made, I think. While I sometimes fail at this, I do try and believe I did a decent job here of working both eyes up at the same time. It's a common misconception that it is easier to work on one eye and then work the other, trying to match the first one that you made. And I find this to be untrue. It's much easier to build up both at the same time, slowly and a little bit at a time. And I find this to be true for the portrait as a whole as well. And I did pay attention while sculpting this portrait to work both sides at the same time. And I think it worked out a lot easier for me than sometimes in the past where, I, where I've lost focus and, and worked mostly on one side. Because I'm right-handed, it's a bit easier to work on the right side. Or, yeah, the right side for us, but the, 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 the sculpture is left side of the face. It's a bit easier to work on that when you're right-handed. But working on both sides at the same time is definitely going to be more successful for me. I know I probably repeat myself quite a bit in these videos, but I do so in order to hammer home some points through to you. Just like the rest of the portrait, slowly building up the eyes reveal issues before they become too hard or too annoying, I guess, to deal with. Not only with the eyes themselves, but with the surrounding areas as well. So here I notice at some point that the width of my eye sockets were a bit asymmetrical. And I noticed this because the eyes seemed to be the same width, more or less, but there was way less space from the outside corner, or not way less, but a little bit less space from the outside corner of one eye to the outside border of the head compared to the other. And upon closer inspection, I found that 
this issue was caused by the eye sockets being slightly irregular. It was a pretty easy fix to push the edge of one eye socket outwards, but it goes to show that if you pay attention, issues can be revealed to you by the fact that other elements are being added or refined. Which breaks up the space a bit more, which I find personally tends to make spaces a little bit easier to judge, if you break them up, that is, with other elements. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for a new video next week and the new Patreon exclusive series on sculpting portraits coming very soon. Consider becoming a patron to get access to the portrait series, the half-life size series and many many more in the future. Thank you for watching, stay creative and I hope to see you in the next one.